Well, good morning. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord and uh, want to make a few announcements this morning as we get started. Um, some different things that are going on in the life of the church and some different things that we're trying to do and uh, in the midst of, of course, our COVID. So one of the things that we're doing is we're doing uh, um, communion bags for our shut-ins or people that can't get out. And um, we will have those for pickup um, from Monday through Friday. And uh, so call the church. I think we've touched base with most people. We've already been able to work out most of our um, logistics on that. And thank you so much for tackling that. We forget that there are several people that have not... Um, been able to have communion. So what we're doing is, it's kind of a home kit. It'll have a little bit of liturgy in there. It'll already be blessed. And the family can either take it with us on a Sunday morning, if, if they like. They can take it on their own time. And uh, just something that we're doing um, to kind of continue to reach out and try to figure out how to do some of this stuff in the midst of um, COVID. I will tell you this, and we want to thank the congregation so much. Uh, we went from 25% of our pledges to 43 in one week. So we're still running a little bit behind, but that is a huge gain um, in, in one week. So we want to thank you guys for that as we continue um, to take our pledges um, <clears throat> for the year. And uh, <clears throat> I've had a few people ask me you know, about pledges and why. This year it's particularly important, and the reason is is because of how we're having to budget and uh, looking at different things we have to do, what we can and can't be on and off campus for. So it just really helps us with, uh, with all of our planning. This uh, afternoon uh, at 6 o'clock, you are uh, invited to uh, uh, go to the community-wide um, Thanksgiving service. And that will be 6 o'clock at the, uh, the Baptist Church. Uh, we didn't get word on it till late. Um, and so I won't be having a part in it this year, but just still want to invite uh, anybody that would like to go and be a part of their uh, community Thanksgiving. So that will be today at 6. And then we have two meetings this afternoon, one at 2 and one at 3, and that's finance at 2, trustees at 3, and um, so lots of things going on. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much. For being able to come into the house of worship. Come to a place where we can once again meet with you. Feel your presence. God, we just pray that the power of the Holy Spirit would come upon us now. And God, that we would come into your house this morning. That we would leave all the world behind just for this hour. And that we could just spend time with you. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
Amen. Good morning. You may stand and let's share the peace of cross with one another. As we remain standing, let us join together in this historic confession of our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sit at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we come to our um, pastoral prayers and um, got um, some news yesterday, not good news, of course, that John Abernathy had passed away. Um, some of y'all would remember he'd sit right about back there but in front of Doc and them. Um, we didn't really know he was sick. He had a, he, it was COVID-related, um, and they're going to... Uh, do something back um, in his hometown this week, um, but uh, just want to pray for Margaret um, in the midst of this and John. And um, once again, he he worked up at the funeral home and all, but he was always so good to work with. I promise. Like he he like <clears throat> some funeral directors are all right. He was great. I promise. Yeah, I, I promise he was. Also. Um, Got a call Friday um, that Skip Jordan had been admitted to the hospital. Um, uh, they thought it was sepsis, but I think we um, have kind of ruled that out. <clears throat> He's on an antibiotic, and uh, he, he did not test positive for COVID, which was a good thing, um, but had some other breathing issues and some things going on. And then I got a call on Thursday night that Pat Pinnell, um, she did test positive for COVID. And she is um, in the hospital. And then I told you all about Kathy Riggins last week. And um, I kind of explained it different. Uh, well, I got a different explanation when I talked to Ronald. It's actually her back that the compression is in. And uh, she didn't have uh, broken bones in other places but her back. So they're going to uh, do some rehab and continue to, uh, to work in and through that. Just want to encourage everybody to be safe. I know the holidays are coming up. I also want to pray for some of y'all because I know that you may not be able to travel and you may not be able to uh, see your loved ones. And I know how tough um, that can be. Um, so we want to we want to lift you guys up and uh, continue just to lift up um, that they'll get this vaccination. And, and you know we're hearing good news. Um, 
still a way out, but at least we do have some good news. And at this point, any news is good news. Um, so let's pray. God, as with a heavy heart, I come to you today. And we lay the Abernathy family at your feet, the loss of John. And God, we didn't really even know that he was sick. They're very private, but God, we know what a fine man that he was. God, he was always so good, always smiled, always worked with people at the funeral home. And God, he was just good in so many ways. But God, now he's home with you. God, we pray for his wife. We know this is tough. God, we lift the Jordan family up to you. and God, we continue to pray for Skip. He's not out of the woods yet, but at least we had good news this week. And so, God, we pray that you'd be with him. That you'd be with Pat. God, as she is um, tested positive for COVID, she hadn't been feeling good for about a week. And so, God, now we just lay her at your feet. God, we ask your healing spirit to come upon her. God, we pray for the Riggins family. We pray for um, her as she has this compressed disc and how she's going to have to do some rehab. God, we pray for those that will be traveling if they can. God, we pray that people will stay safe. We pray as we receive our college kids home. Many of them will not even go back after Thanksgiving. So God, we pray for safe travels there. And God, you know the other prayer concerns on our hearts and minds. God, how each one of us in a lot of ways feel overwhelmed by everything that's going on. So God, I just ask that you would send your shalom, your peace upon us. God, let us rest in your spirit. Send your spirit to comfort us and guide us. God, we just ask that this vaccination that they are, this vaccine that they're working on would work. God, we pray that we'd be safe. God, we pray for all of those that are hospitalized, our frontline workers. God, we just ask, we just ask. That you would hold us up in this time. And now let us pray with the confidence that you taught your disciples to pray. Saying these words. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our hymn of preparation this morning as we gather together.
Let us pray. Gracious God, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from your mouth. Make us hungry for this heavenly food, that it may nourish us today in the ways of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, the bread of heaven. Amen. And now as you are able, if you will, please stand for the scripture reading in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 through 21. Hear the word of the Lord. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but as wise, making the best use of time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always and for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Amen. You may be seated. And as you are being seated, children are now invited to meet Miss Beth to head toward Children's Church, and the youth are invited to meet Mr. <coughs> Spencer for youth time. Thank you all so much. Well, at this time, we want to invite you to give. Remember, there's a number of ways that you can continue to do that. 
Uh, you can give online, you can mail a check to the church, or if you're here in person, you can drop your gifts in the baskets by the door, or you can set up charitable giving through your place of employment. We are just so thankful for your generosity in all the ways that you uh, give, not only monetary, but in several other ways as well, in serving and giving, being the hands and feet of Christ uh, here in this church and community and beyond. With that being said, let's have a word of prayer. Gracious God, we thank you so much for this opportunity you give us uh, in each and every week of life to give back to you and to your kingdom. And we thank you, God, for the ways that we are seeing our contributions make a difference in all the, all the people around us and in the world and how we continue to proclaim the good news. Even in the midst of all the chaos and the disruption, there's still good news that we get to share because of your people coming together and working together to build up the kingdom of God. So we pray, God, that your blessings will be upon the gifts that are given and those whom give this day. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. So this morning we uh, <clears throat> come to the end of our um, Thanksgiving messages and uh, I want to just reiterate just a little bit of what David read for us because today we're going to talk about what do you do if you have a troubled heart? How, how do you give thanks when your heart's troubled? And um, so that's what we're going to look at today and if you notice at, at the tail end of the, the verse that that David read, um, it, it goes on to say, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody to the Lord with your heart. We always think about those things of, of doing that with our mouth, but this says with our heart, giving thanks always in every and for everything. To God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. And so how do you do that if you have a troubled heart? And so what we want to look at today and what we want to talk about is how do you defeat a troubled heart? How do you get to a place in your life where when your heart's troubled, you have the, it, something you can go to to help you get out of the funk, to move forward, to get out of that place where you're at? And I thought about this, and I thought that the first thing that we ought to do is we ought to kind of define what a troubled heart is. And um, now, there are several things that could lead to a troubled heart. But I'm going to mention the three most common. These are the three most common factors that lead to your heart being troubled. 
And the first is fear. Your, your heart will be troubled if you are gripped with fear. As a matter of fact, we have just spent six weeks before this sermon series talking about overcoming uh, fear, that fear was a liar. I went on and I've continued to do that. this. We're also talking about the seven fears um, that are common to everybody. And we're doing that on Wednesday night through our, our, our online Bible study. And so we've spent this time with fear. Now, having said that, fear is not one of those things that you like conquer and then move on. Because what normally happens with fear is there's usually a new fear right behind the old fear. So it's an, kind of an ongoing process in your life. But at least when you identify it, you know that you can begin to tackle it. The next thing that contributes to a troubled heart is stress. Stress can lead to all kinds of things. You know, stress can lead to, to, to um, you, your skin breaking out, losing hair, losing sleep, stomach issues, you name it. Stress can do all this stuff to you. And we all know that it's not good for the physical heart. But stress can really trouble us. And I guarantee you, um, we're getting ready to start the most stressful time of the year, Right? I mean, the holidays. But add pandemic on top of holidays. And that's stressful. Think about the stress that that brings. And then finally, uh, the third thing we're going to kind of look at is a troubled heart, or, or a thing that troubles our heart, is the death of someone or the death of something we love doing. Those are two other things that come into play when we have a troubled heart. So I want to start today with fear, and I want to go to, the, to Mark, and I want to read a scripture for you guys. And uh, this is the story in Mark where, where Jesus has, has been preaching, and he's been teaching, and, and Jesus has this knack for as soon as he gains popularity, you know what he does? He goes, let's go to the other side. Let's, let's move on. We got bogged down in our, our Jesus in the Gospels talking about miracles a few weeks ago on Sunday night. And we were talking about how, how difficult of a time it would be and who did Jesus pick and choose who to heal and not to heal. But what we got to remember is that Jesus' number one thing was, was not to heal disease. It was to heal the heart. And so he had to keep this focus on his ministry. And his focus in where he was going. And so he asked the disciples to move to the other side. And here's what it says. That day when evening came, he and his disciples, he said to his disciples, let's go to the other side. Leaving the crowd behind, they took him along just as he was in the boat. Now here's an important thing. I want you to hear this. There were also other boats with him. So there, there's other people that are traveling and they're in this group of boats. And then all of a sudden a furious squall came up. And the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. But Jesus was in the stern sleeping on a cushion. So this boat's getting tossed around. It's getting thrown around everywhere. And here Jesus is kicked back on his cushion. Snoring away. Right? The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. And then he said to his disciples, why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Why are you afraid? Do you have no faith? And they were terrified and they asked each other, Who is this that even the wind and the waves obey him? Now this must have been a heck of a squall. 
This must have been like a tornado on the water or something. Because these guys were fishermen. And these guys were used to water. But there was something about this storm that gripped them with fear. More than any of the others, it seems like. And here was Jesus sitting in the back. Can you imagine their fear of drowning? And Jesus is just there? Years ago, I, uh, the way I got into triathlon was um, a, a dare by one of my youth. And um, we were actually in San Francisco on a mission trip. And they were doing the escape from Alcatraz um, triathlon there. And so I was with, I was running down the pier with Gavin and Alan and I don't remember who else was with us, but I remember those two. And we got to the place where they were just finishing the swim. So the escape from Alcatraz triathlon, what they do is they take this boat and they like dock it right next to the island at Alcatraz. It's a huge barge. And then everybody jumps in and they swim across that rough water. Now, I promise you, we were there in July and that water is like ice cold, right? And it, it's got ripples and it's got everything. And so, Gavin looks at me and he goes, hey man, we ought to do one of these. And I go, who are you talking to? Have you seen my weight? They throw people like me back in the water, not get out of the water. He goes, no, no, we got to do one of these. And the truth is, the reason I didn't want to do it is because I was absolutely petrified of open water swimming. Seriously. And so I knew if I was ever going to do this, I had to overcome my fears. So finally, I had overcome my fears, and it was the very first race that I was ever doing. It was at, at Lake Gunnersville. And... Um, we were getting ready to start the swim. It was just an 800-yard swim. I'm just like, that's just eight football fields. That's just eight football fields. That's just eight football fields. So you get in the water, and this is what they call, um, it's not a shotgun start. It's, it's a time start. So everybody gets in the water, and then three seconds later, somebody else gets into the water. So I finally get in the water, and I'm swimming, and I'm still nervous, and I get to the first buoy. Now, the buoy is the place where you have to turn and go the other way, and so... I get to the buoy, and lo and behold, there is a lady, because th what they've got for their buoy is a keg that they've painted orange, and it floats. And there's this lady hanging on to this buoy, right? Get me out of this water! Now, here's, I was telling this story to somebody, and somebody says, well, preacher, did you help her? And I said, No! I kept swimming. And, I, and I, now you talk about a troubled heart. This lady had a troubled heart. But if somebody didn't come rescue her, she was about to have a dead heart. Now finally they got her out of the water and I got her out of the water. I was so happy. I did my first open water swim. And I got up to the shore and I said, man, that was awesome. And then one of the guys goes, hey, you know you can touch the whole time. I said, what? He goes, yeah, you could have just walked it if you wanted you're out of your mind. No, you could. It's that shallow. But we have this fear, right, of water. And here's Jesus in this boat. And the disciples are scared to death. And he calms the storm. But then he gives them the first remedy for a troubled heart. He says, have you no faith? Have you not seen what I've been doing? Have you not seen the miracles? Have you not seen the people that are coming to me? Have you not seen the things that are taking place? See, we talked about grace last week. But in order to have grace, you must first have faith. Faith that God is with you. Faith that God loves you. Faith that God will not leave you. And faith that He's working even in the midst of all the chaos. Even in the midst of all the things that are going on. 
God is working in those things. And if you're going to have grace, you have to get there. See, faith is the evidence of things unseen. I like to say it like this. Faith is believing in things till they come true. Faith is believing in things till they come true. And when we lose our faith, our hearts become so troubled. We've got to have that faith. Listen, listen what the scripture says in John, 1 John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Do you realize that Jesus is greater than everything going on in this crazy world? And I know it's hard to see. But remember, faith is seen ahead or believing till you see. The next thing we talk about is stress. And you can't have a troubled heart with stress. Nothing stresses people out more than having company at their house, right? Like my kids are always like, Dad, tell mom not to invite anybody over. We'll be cleaning the house for three days. And as soon as we get it clean, little girl, tornadoes coming through it anyway, Dad. But nothing stresses us out. And then you've got to make the food, make sure it's all prepared right, make sure everything's good. Have you ever been somewhere and they ran out of food? Have you ever run out of food? You know, we used to always have this statement at things that say it's always better to have too much than not enough. A few years ago, we were at a, a, a mission banquet um, over in Hoover, and a, a friend of ours had bought a table to raise money and, and invited us to go. And they do a silent auction, and then they do a live auction, and it's to raise money um, for a refuge and hope which is a, a, a mission organization that, that works out of Uganda. And um, there, there's people that are related to this guy that um, actually run the center there. And so um, we're sitting at the table, and I knew that, that, that Joe had paid a pretty penny for this table. Um, but like always, we kind of waited for the line to die down. And then we got up to the line, and like, they're like, well, we're sorry, we're out of food. <laughs> And I'm like, out of food? Yeah, here's a biscuit. I was like, yeah, that's like, like eating a crouton right there. But anyway, they were out of food. And they were embarrassed, and we were embarrassed, and I was embarrassed because Joe had spent all this money. But we knew it was a fundraiser. But the truth is, that creates stress. There's another story in the Scripture that Jesus does the same thing that he does on the water. The disciples come to Jesus. He says, look, the people are hungry. They've been here all day. You know what Jesus does? He looks at them and he says, well, feed them. You know what one of them says, right? Jesus, like, you realize, like, there's thousands of people right here. Like, that would take a year's wages, and they would still only get a little. Finally, Jesus says, well, feed them. Well, we don't have anything. Well, eventually they go out and they find five and two, right? They find five little bitty fish and these two loaves of bread. And these are little bitty fish. About like you would eat sardines. That was kind of what they ate. These are little bitty rolls of bread. And all of a sudden... He takes that and he feeds everyone. And he asks the disciples the same thing. Why couldn't you do it? Where is your faith? Jesus asked the disciples to feed the crowd. But they were perplexed. And John, it says, he did this so he could test them. Notice once again, here's Jesus coming to the rescue. But he not only provides, he provides more than what they need. 
So once again, what Jesus is saying is when you're stressed, have faith that I'll come through. And not only that I will provide, but I will provide in abundance. Now the last fear is the hardest. John 14, 1 says, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. The only way we're going to keep our hearts from being troubled is to place our total trust in Jesus. But sometimes that becomes hard. Especially when there's death. And there's different kinds of death. There's unexpected death. There's expected death. Then there's what we call questionable death. That's the worst kind of death. That's the death that you don't know if that person was saved or not when they died. And that's why I tell everybody, don't leave any doubt for your family. Don't trouble them. Follow the Lord. Make that decision. But then there's the death of jobs and the death of other things that happens. And once again, Jesus gives us a story. This time it's in Matthew 9. When Jesus entered the synagogue leader's house and saw the noisy crowd and the people playing pipes, he said, go away. This girl is not dead, but asleep. And here's what I love. And you know what the scripture says? He told these people to leave the room because this girl had died. You know what they did? They laughed at him. That's what the scripture says. But they laughed at him. Because they had no faith. After the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took the little girl by the hand. And she got up. News of this spread throughout the region. See, to Jesus, the death was real. But he promises something, and he shows us something in the Scripture. That those that believe in him, they won't die, they'll just sleep. Only for a minute. Until we're reunited. See, we don't need to fear death. We don't need to let that trouble our hearts because here it talks about it. And he entered with the five as before into the chamber of death where the body was laid out for burial. And he grasped, I love this, her hands and uttered the words which in Aramaic says, Talitha Kumah. Girl or damsel. Hadn't heard that in a while. I say to you, arise. We can't let our hearts be troubled. We can't even let death trouble us. Because the promise here, and this story here, shows us that Christ defeats death. Damn so I say to thee, arise. And immediately she arose and walked. And her spirit and her breath returned. Listen, Jesus uses these stories to help us defeat our troubled heart. Look, I don't know where you are. But I know where most people are with this year. And I know it's troubling. But we can defeat it. And the way we can defeat it is by having faith that Jesus is going to provide. He's going to provide for our fear. He's going to provide for our stress, worry, and anxiety. And ultimately, death cannot defeat us because we have Jesus. Let's pray. God, as we come today, we hear the good news. We hear the good news of a Savior. 
kicked back sleeping while everybody else is worried. And he just stood and calmed everything. God, how often are we stressed by the holidays, by everything that's coming up? Got to get the house right. But remember, it was Mary that sat at Jesus' feet as Martha tried to get everything ready. And finally, God, we hear so much about death these days. And God, it does sadden us. God, we lose loved ones and parts of us. But God, don't let that trouble our heart either. Because we know the promise that whosoever believeth in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God, thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Our hymn of dedication this morning is Come Ye Thankful People, Come. forget that our Stevens ministers will be here to uh, uh, administer communion to you and pray with you today. Thank you guys so much for setting this up and being here this morning and uh, spend as much time as you need at the altar and, and, and um, thank you for that. So receive the benediction. God, I pray that you go with us now, that you will be with us, that you will guide and protect us, that we will check where we are in our faith. And that we will continue to believe until it comes true. God, we thank you that we have come and had a chance to worship. In Jesus' name, amen.